You may have a close family member, maybe it's your spouse or one of your children, a very close friend that has a problem with their temperament. Uh, maybe you look at it as anger, but it actually could be rage, and I want to express the difference. Um, anger is a legitimate emotion. The Bible actually says in Ephesians 4.26, be ye angry. That's the old King James. In other words, if you're really hurt by someone, you not only have the right to be angry, you have the liberty and the freedom to be angry. However, the definition of anger according to the scripture is and sin not. Therefore, when anger gets to a place where it begins to overtake us, then we're probably in the place of sin. And we actually will describe a person like that as they tend to lose their temper or they get so upset that they're uncontrollable, you can't reason with them. And the Bible describes that in the second part of Ephesians 4.26 as wrath. Today we may use the word rage. And it actually says, do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. That means that while we may do the anger, we control the anger, the rage or the wrath controls us. Therefore, when we are triggered, that explosive response or that uh, very unexplained sort of behavior that, with words that may come out on someone and just strip them of their value or dignity, or the display is so completely out of control that you feel not only uncomfortable, but you actually feel afraid in their presence. I actually had that wrath. And that, that comes from not only deep uh, violation against the soul, it usually occurs from years ago. So what happens is what the first response of the person who's been hurt or abused or berated, rejected, uh, whatever it might be that has caused that. Sexual abuse is another contributing factor against that person. Well, years ago, the response, even if that they were a child, a son or a daughter, uh, they would have had a response of anger towards the person for what they did. Now, that doesn't mean the people around them knew that they were angry or that something was wrong. However, if the wound of violation against them was not cleansed, that wound becomes infected. That's the term that I like to use because we understand the difference between a wound that uh, is on our body but is not overtaking us. It hurts, but it, it, it's not uh, uh, causing us to completely change our, our uh, activities because it's not infected. However, if that wound becomes infected, it can take over our body. Uh, toxins go into our bloodstream. Our, actually, our blood can be, uh, become toxic. It's called blood poisoning. Uh, there can be gangrene and that sort of thing. And then the person is in danger of their whole body shutting down. Their whole body is essentially dying. In the realm of the soul, anger can be managed or controlled uh, and then walked through. But rage will actually create such toxicity in the person that it will overtake the person in their behavior, their words, uh, the way their demeanor presents itself. They will begin to experience afflictions such as depression, um, anxiety, and fear because, because we're not designed to carry a big tank filled of rage. Well, it comes from intense bitterness and hatred for the person that violated that person. So if there are places or times where your husband or your wife or maybe one of your children or, or someone you work with uh, where you are just having a dialogue with them and something just seems to go wrong instantly and they completely lose control, that is not anger. That is rage. It controls them. It's almost like stimulus response. It uh, bypasses their mind's ability to control it and they just explode from the place of the memory of violation. Now, when the person is experiencing that, they're not actually thinking, well, the reason I'm losing control is because years ago, this happened to me, my, my parents uh, were abusive, or uh, one of them left, or something of that nature. That's not anything part of the, uh, of the mind's thinking or scripting. But they will feel as if their dignity is being taken by something that has occurred in your interaction. 
even if you really are, did not do that, they will interpret it as such because rage creates um, this kind of a blindness in the mind. First of all, the person doesn't see that they have this deep infection in their soul, in their emotions. And the second thing is they don't know the source and they really themselves don't know why they lost control. But I can tell you uh, in most situations, it's because whatever was said to them uh, made them feel as if they had failed you or that uh, they had done terribly, terribly wrong because of the way they were treated when they did something wrong as a child or because they could never measure up or any of those things could occur. And there you are feeling like, what did I do? What did I say to create this response? And the truth is, you're not responsible, especially for the way that person gets, no matter what you did or what you have done. And the, uh, the careful thing here is not to say that, uh, well, that's just the way they are. Well, no, if that is the way they are, then they will be that way till death do they part. That's like a curse, basically saying they cannot be free of it, but they can be free in the name of Jesus. They can be free of this rage and they, uh, it's what's in them. It's not who they are, it's what's in them. If something is in us, it can be cleansed out. So to keep this very simple, if we don't let the sun go down on our rage, we stay in the place of anger and we forgive the person uh, that created the offense against us, well then we won't go from anger to rage. But the person we're talking about is too late. They have to now seek their own forgiveness and repentance. They have to uh, purpose in their heart to turn from their rage that they have because it's hatred. And 1 John 3.15 says, if any man or woman hates another person, they are a murderer. So this rage creates a murderous heart against the soul, not healthy. And it would create all sorts of other problems like health problems, work problems, uh, interpersonal problems, uh, leadership problems, anything that uh, where a person has to interact with another, there's, there's going to be toxicity. So as I close here, I want you to think about this person, uh, and it may even be you struggling with this rage. And we're going to ask God in just a few minutes to reveal to us what uh, the struggle may be in ourselves or that loved one, to show us. As David said in Psalm 139, he said, Search me, O God. Try me, know me, my heart, my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. So that the Holy Spirit can pierce through that blindness and show and reveal what has created that rage. That's why we seek the face of the Lord in these situations. So let's pray. Father, we come before you believing and trusting in your wisdom to pierce my heart and the heart of my loved one to show each one of us the place where we have held back a pain, a violation, a repeated violation, maybe even a defilement from sexual abuse. Uh, whatever it might be, show us that place of worst pain because that is my place of greatest need right now before you. I pray, O oh God, that that would be revealed and that once it is revealed, that each one of us would see our sin against you for not trusting you for that pain. That we would see the bitterness and the resentment and the rage that has come from it. And Lord, I repent. I ask that you, Lord, would bring a spirit of repentance upon this, my spouse or my son, my daughter, so that they would be uh, cleansed from this sin of bitterness, rage, hatred, and be totally cleansed by your blood and set free. And that you would restore our souls from now until we see you face to face. In Jesus we pray, amen.